Patrick Franti here with Sloan Allison. Um, we're here today, one week after the absolute devastation of the Lahaina community in West Maui. Um, you know, I know everyone's been just kind of going a million miles an hour since that happened, trying to trying to help any way they can, um, you know, helping with things, donating, whatever it might be. Um, and, you know, we're, we're just trying to come and, and we, we've been trying to figure out the past couple of days how to be most helpful. I mean, Sloan, Sloan, you've been really leading the charge, you know, boots on the ground, just... I mean, talk a little bit about what you've been seeing and, and doing, and um, it's just, yeah, it's unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's 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 one of the more tragic events that have that's happened in my lifetime, and um, you know, I, I just tried to to be over there and and on the ground and doing you know missions for individual people or the collective or kind of you know, just be over there and get a feel for what people need and, and communicate that to the other side of the island. Cause there was, I don't know, those first couple of days when there was, you know, limited uh, electricity, limited phone service. Um, it was really hard to get accurate information from West Maui over to the other side to kind of get a better understanding of what they needed to, you know, where supplies were, because it, it was, it was difficult to get over there those first couple of days. And, um, and so the, the relaying of information, you know, wasn't, wasn't fluid yet. And, um, when I, I was there Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then we went again yesterday and the needs of the people there seemed to change, you know, every couple of hours, you know, they would, they would get a certain supply of, of say canned goods. And then after four or five hours, they would have so many canned goods that, that it would, it was a stockpile and they could, number one, couldn't store it. They couldn't give it enough of it out in fast enough time. And then it it pivoted or transitioned into something else that they needed. And so being over there was, you know, and trying to get to phone service and communicate to the other side or, or you know, just just and just being there for them. And they the, seeing people that, you know, had just gone through what they had gone through and, and just hugging them or talking to them or, you know, getting word out that they were OK was, you know, the most important things in those first few days. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's hard to even put into words, you know, kind of what, what these people have gone through. I mean, we, we don't, you know, we're thankfully both, both, you know, Sloan and I personally, um, you know, don't live in that area or don't live in the high end and didn't go through that directly, but we've got all kinds of friends. And I mean, everyone does, everyone has friends, family, relatives that are um just hugely affected by this and it's just it's hard to wrap your head around um one thing we can say for sure is that you know a hundred percent of the efforts in the relief since this happened to here we are a week later has been community driven um it's pretty unbelievable to see what people have put together and made happen and everyone's kind of done it in a different way. Um, no one really knows what we should all be doing. You know, there's no, there's no one telling anyone what to do. Everyone's just kind of doing what they can. Um, but the community has really, really done everything and, and stepped up in a way that like it is, it's just, you, you can't understand it till you see it. And I think we yeah. all knew, you know, when you live in this community and you, I think we all knew if something happened like this, that the response would be that way. And that's why a lot of us live here. It's the people, but to see it happen is just, it's, it's crazy. So here we are a week later. Um, you know, the, the government is, is sort of starting to get organized. FEMA's here, Red Cross is here. Um, you know, they're stepping in and helping the existing operations. That is going to evolve, obviously. They, they're going to be taking over um, these operations, but but it took them, you know, it's been a week. And it was days before any support was seen. So it's just, 
And, and I mean, maybe people have gone through natural disasters before, you know, have, they understand that they've seen that, but it, it's just kind of blowing everyone's mind how long it took for anything to happen and, and still very little assistance from any sort of public authority. Um, you know, our first responders, we've got a lot of friends in those fields and it's just unimaginable what they've had to go through, um, what they're still going through. And we just can't thank them enough for, for what they're doing. Um, and, you know, now our goal is really to, you know, everyone's trying to figure out what, where, where can we best be helpful? What can we do? Um, you know, our, our goal, I think, is just to try and really be a good resource for people um, informationally. I mean, there's so much out there floating around. I mean, social media and, and just there's so much information and I don't and, and a lot of misinformation and people don't know what to believe. Um, so we're trying to kind of vet that and, and be some sort of resource for people and, and try and give factual information, right? Um, I think that's crucial at this point. And our whole team has, has been doing an amazing job at, you know, talking to the experts in each field and, and trying to get resources from those experts. And then we're trying to put them all in one place. Um, for distribution for people or where people can find that stuff um we you know we're we're kind of just jumping on video today to get the ball rolling um and i feel like video is you know just an easy way to get information out and that, that's what we're going to try and do so that's really our, our primary objective here is just to be be a, a go-to trusted resource where people can read information or get information and they know it's accurate um and you know and just press forward press forward that's all we can do let me uh i'm gonna jump back in real quick i, I know you, you yeah. said it but it, it just the people of maui and specifically west maui are just it the way that they have stepped up for one another and how organized they have been in, in each you know area over there as you drive you know from from kapalua down to lahaina there's four or five um, community driven um, setups for people. And um, I know N Napili Park had, or Napili Market had one. Um, and then as you go south, you you get to, to S turns in Kahana. And the first time that we were there, it was Thursday. And when we pulled in there, there was six or seven boats out there waiting for jet 10 or 12 jet skis to go out and get supplies and bring them back. There's this huge setup in the parking lot. There's tents, they're organized, they got clothes, food you know, water. They had a medical tent when we were there yesterday. There was, you know, at least 500 people there helping and seeing, seeing things like that and, and then, you know, finding joy and what they were doing in the midst of tragedy was, was one of the more inspirational things that, that I've ever seen. And it's, you know, it's a direct, it's, it's a direct reflection of the culture here and the people here. And, um, yeah, they're, they're fighting, they're fighting for their lives over there. And it's, um, yeah, it's the least that we can do to support them and, and try and, and do what we're doing here with, with accurate information and um, raising money and doing just whatever we can for the people over there to, to help get them what they need. Yeah, proud to be a part of this community. Um, yep, so we're we're going to wrap it and get, you know, try to get more of that information going out to people and um, we're here to help.